Welcome friends. Today, we are doing another unboxing video. Terrific. Um, might throw in a first impression as well. We never know. So, excuse me whilst I hydrate. I haven't actually bought any perfumes this year so far. The year is 2023 if you're watching this in future. Um, and the date is only the 12th, it's only even two weeks old. But that's, you know, um, it's not bad. I bought these fragrances last year, which was, again, less than two weeks ago. And I received them a few days ago. But I couldn't unbox them and do first impressions because it's my sense of smell. I was going to do an unboxing video on the day I got them, which is what I usually do. But I couldn't because I couldn't smell them. You know, which is a bit pointless. Um, what will become of the channel if someone who talks about smells can't smell anything? I'll just have to talk and nobody wants that. Anyway. I have here with me... 100ml bottle of fragrance, a vintage fragrance, and I have four minis, one of which I bought, and the other three have come gratis. I bought these fragrances off an eBay seller I know and trust called Sonny Mitra, all one word. Um, he sells many vintage perfumes, and they are all fantastic. They've always been in great condition. I can say that, and I've bought everything off him, and he's included a few like free minis here. But uh, if you're in the UK, have a browse of his eBay store. Um, and you might find something that you've always been looking for. I did. <coughs> Excuse me. So... I will introduce the minis first. And on this channel, as we know, I am a big fan of a little mini. I will show you the free ones that I got first. Um, he often includes like samples and like an occasional mini and stuff, you know. So the first time I bought off him, he actually included, I don't know if it's over here, I can't see it. Um, a vintage uh, sample so like a little two mil, one and a half mil sample of Paco Rabanne Eau de Sport. Paco Rabanne Pour Homme Sport. Or like, you know, it was the sport version of Paco Rabanne Pour Homme. Uh, fantastic. Even the sample was in good condition. It may have even been in better condition than my bottle. But uh, not to worry. So. I will introduce to you now the minis. And the first mini is Knowing, EDP by Estee Lauder. That's a box though, that's not the actual mini. So we shall open it, and reveal, there it is, and it's, it's got a touch of Macassar about it, I think. You know, the bottle. Um, there you are, little mini thing. Lovely that. Oh look, how crafty. If you see on the back of the little box thing, it's got a little bit of gold foil, so it like it shimmers when you look at it. How, how cool! The next is Ted Lapidus Paul Holm. I'm actually selling a bottle of this, uh, so I'm glad I've got the mini, so that I can always remember what it smells like. I mean, I could remember what it smelled like anyway, but oh my god, it's so cool! Oh, Aram, friend of the channel friend of the duck he says that that smells like a catcher's mitt and while we don't have catcher's mitt mitts in this country i know exactly what he means like leather with like human skin funk sweaty hands on it you know and then from the freeze from the little freebie in inclusions the last one is this mini of another perfume i own called mystere de rocha that is absolutely tremendous. Just look at them. Awesome. I don't think I'm going to do first impressions on these. But um, I just wanted to show you them. 
you know. So these are the little little frames. I love stuff like this. This is going. These are going to make another appearance on my mini video, which is coming at some point this year. Don't worry. It's just I've got so many. I don't know how to do it. You know, it'll take a while. It'll be like one of those vintage unboxing videos. But um, not to worry. So there we are. These are the little freebies I got. So thank you very much, Sonny. I'll put you back, knowing that I stay louder. Why it's got that bloody bit of foil on the back, it's just, I just don't understand. Well, I do understand, it's just, I don't think it does much, to be honest. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of paper in this box. What are you doing here? Come here. What's happening? Ah, it's part of a receipt. Jean Curlio, 19... Look, ah, look what it says. Jean Curlio, 1900? It wasn't made by Estee Lauder in 1900. 19 something, 19%? I don't know. 73% volume, you know, that perfume must be thick. But uh, yes, apparently this was a Jean Curlio. So that's good to know. Knowing, you know, the more you know, get it? Once you've recovered from that joke, I will move on. Ah, excuse me whilst I hydrate. So, the mini I bought <coughs> is a fragrance I have been Interested to buy, but never wanted a blind buy. One of those strange ones. Now, I know I've bought, blind bought many a fragrance, but I'm actually not really a, much of a fan of the original, which, considering it's a vintage staple, you will be surprised to hear. But it's, it's the truth. I'm just not a big fan of the original. But this flank has always intrigued us, and I put a little bit on my hand last night during the stream, and it's fabulous, to be honest with you. It really is. Very bitter. And this is Eau Sauvage. I don't know if you can see that. Eau Sauvage Fraicheur Queer. So it's a fresh leather fragrance. A little 10 mil. This is fantastic, by the way. The bottle's immense. Look at that. Tiny little thing. For some reason, I just think tiny little versions of like, I don't know, maybe it's like the same thing that the same reason people like building Lego cities and they have like their massive train sets, you know? Little mini versions of things are cool. They're just cool, you know? And so I'm very happy to own this. And it's got the juice and scent. The juice is intact. The juice is beautifully preserved, to be frank. Um, the top note, that sort of bitter almost a stringent kind of, sorry, the, the, the top of the lid, the lid opens, so you can see that, like the CD on the top, that opens, but it keeps popping off, which isn't ideal, you know? It's not really what I want, because I don't want it to evaporate. I might put a little bit of sellotape on that. Um, but it's, it's so good, the, the, the new version of Eau Sauvage, I don't think has held up very well. Um, one of the reasons I think that you get to a point with certain vintages is they were made, when they were originally made, they were made with the, with the available ingredients at the time. And those ingredients often aren't available anymore, especially the older the fragrance, you know? I wouldn't go on about oak, moss, and fucking, you know, all this different kind of thing, but it, there are lots of different ingredients which aren't available anymore. Um, but this was an, I think this was an 80s release. And that's only like 20, 25 years after this fragrance was originally released. So it's, a, it's in a much better condition than what today's version is, which is another 30, 40 years after that, you know? So surprisingly, for a fragrance that's so top heavy, 
as all Sauvage is, this is held up magnificently. It shows it can be done. Doesn't necessarily mean it happens all the time, but it can be done if they're stored correctly and with a bit of luck, you know what I mean? And they're sealed. So yes, I was very pleased to own that. Very bitter, very bitter. I could be looking for a bottle of that. Maybe, maybe not, because I'm trying to actually get rid of some at the minute. But um, anyhow, the main bottle, the main event. Sorry, it's taken us 10 minutes to get here, but uh, you know, I like to, I like to have a bit chat. Excuse me whilst I hydrate once again, dear me. The main event. Some of you may have noticed that I actually bought a 30 mil bottle of this a few weeks ago from Sonny as well. Now, I probably wouldn't have bought that if I'd known that he had this because this is a 100 mil and the bottle, this is a 100 mil bottle. <laughs> it's a 100 mil tester of, da, 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 da. oh, come on. Azaro Poham. Eau de Toilette. This is the original formula I am led to believe. And I do believe it. Um, there is the big Azaro on the cap. Sorry. On the back, we have Principo Composant. And Azaro Poham. So the, I imagine that means the principal components. Or the primary components. There's... Accord Hesperide, I will not even, I have no idea what that means. Then Petagran de Paraguay, so I imagine that's Petagran from Paraguay. San, Santal, sandalwood, cardamom, musk, vetiver, basilic, which I'm going to assume is basil, and ambergris. Ambergris. I am hoping that that is real ambergris because when this was in, when this was invented, when this was made, ambergris was a shit sight cheaper than it is now. So I'm hope and, and designer perfumes were much more. I don't want to say luxurious. I mean, perfumes are luxurious items. I mean, nobody needs perfume, do they? Do you know what I mean? But this. Designer perfumes used to be a lot more sort of hi like higher end. They used to be like what niche is now, you know, like what high end does that, you know, high end designer ranges. They, they didn't have them back in the day. They only had their own, per they, they only had their perfumes. And I think frankly, they put a lot more, they put a lot more effort into their perfumes. It feels like that it's a very industrial process now in the, in the creative aspect like the creative, it's obviously it's an industrial process to create, to, to actually make the perfumes, but the creative part of making the perfumes seems a lot more industrialized now, a lot more algorithmic. Um, these don't, these seem a lot more human and a lot more like they've got feeling. Um, anyway, back to the perfume. I did buy a 30 mil bottle, which I probably wouldn't have bought if I'd known he'd had 100 mil, but now I've got 130 mil of the vintage. So not to worry, not to worry. I'm, I, the, the, you know, it's not like it's a bad perfume. So I'm pleased I've got them, to be honest. Um, it's very strange to me that this doesn't have lavender as one of the main notes, because that is like the main note I get, you know? Absolutely. In the, I've got a much more modern version. I think mine's from the early 2000s. Um, and I think this fragrance came out in the mid-70s. Let's just have a quick check, shall we? Really, if I was organised and professional, then I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm not. And it's one of the reasons you love us, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Not that you do, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Excuse me whilst I sniff, but I've still got a little bit of... 1978, it wasn't that far off. It was created by Gerard Anthony, the absolute hero, and Richard Wirtz, or Wirtz. I imagine it's Wirtz. Um, 
the note according to Frey Grantiger, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> anise, lavender, lemon, caraway, basil, bergamot, clary sage, and iris, that's the top, right? The middle notes are vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, cedar, juniper, berries, and cardamom. Base notes are oak moss, leather, amber, musk, and tonka beans. So I'll tell you what I get from my bottle. I get lavender and oak moss and pretty much maybe some bergamot at the top. Lavender, oak moss. Bergamot at the top. Lavender's the main note completely, and then it's got some oak moss to give it some oomph, you know? This seems to tell a different story, and I am much more minded to believe the bottle because, you know, it's literally, like, on its skin. It says there. Also, something else I wanted to point out, just while I remember, this sticker is the same sticker that was on um, my bottle of Patupo Hom in this kind of... This setup, this color, this setup, and which makes me think they may have been made by the same people, you know, by the same house or the same producer, you know. So that should give you an idea of like how different things are now, you know. Azaro is not a not a like a like a an a exclusive brand exclusivity. That's probably a better word. But then here we have your fucking look at that man. That's immense. That. Love that. The cap's absolutely shocking. But we'll love it even more for it. I'll be careful with these things, you know. It's got a Zaro printed in the top. Doesn't have that anymore. I wonder how much money they're saving by doing that. Anyway, let's have a spray. Oh, it's never been sprayed. I was I did three sprays there and nothing happened. I was like, oh, God. Um... Familiarity. I do, it does smell familiar. I'll give it that. That big lavender, huge lavender. But it's, there's, there's just more. The sandalwood. I get the sandalwood from it. Fresh, more complex, deep. I'm getting the vetiver from it. Never got vetiver from the new one. Never got anything remotely resembling vetiver from the new one. Oh, that is fucking glorious, that. Y y hmm. What I will say about this fragrance in general, and I felt this way about the newer bottle as well, is the lavender is... A type of lavender that you get, I think some people call them dryer sheets, but I would just say what, like general, like it smells like you're washing, you know? You know, when you've got your sheets on the line and you've just washed them and they're wet and like they start blowing in the wind and you get the the waft as the as the the smell of the like the washing up powder, the like the lavender. It's got that, but that's the modern ones like that. This one's got a lot more. It's got that still, right? But this has got a lot more going on. Oh, this is much more satisfying. This is much more satisfying than the newer version because of those facets, the fact that it's got more going on, that there's something underneath that washing. But I don't mind smelling like fresh linen. You know what I mean? Sound, as long as that's not all there is, you know, in a perfume. Because if I wanted to smell like fresh linen, right, I would just wash me clothes. Like, I would just put new, well, I wash me clothes anyway, settle. But I would just wear brand new clothes every day. Probably change my clothes about three or four times a day just so I smelled like fresh linen. Do you know what I mean? This has that aspect, but then there's so much more. The woody aspect from the sandalwood. There's a little bit of warmth there as well, which I imagine has come from the sandalwood and the cardamom. Um, not entirely sure how to define pettigrain as a smell. Like, I know it when I smell it, but I couldn't sit there and repeat. Like, I recognize it, but I couldn't repeat to you what pettigrain smells like. 
like verbatim you know what i mean i couldn't sit there like i can with some other notes and stuff you know um ambergris not sure i don't smell ambergris yet maybe it is ambergris maybe it isn't ambergris i know that ambergris was a lot more widely used in designer perfume if this perfume was released now and the said ambergris was in it i just wouldn't believe it you know no, not from Azaro. So, again, this is a tester. Like, I care. I just don't. Um, if you want the juice, sometimes you've just got to get a tester. You've got to do what you must, you know. And I am extremely fortunate to have got this. Thank you very much, Sonny. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you all again soon. Bye.